Today, we're in the world of customer service, focusing on AIP customer service engine. AIP is giving me a comprehensive overview of the customer cases, AI generated responses to those cases, and we have a human in the loop review with feedback and the ontology grounding everything in the truth of my business. This is showing how you can make your customer service operations more efficient while capturing the tribal knowledge of your business. All right, let's dive right in. We're getting a lot of interest in our customer service workflows and our AIP Now Showcase. So I want to show a quick video here about what it's all about. So if I hit explore and then we'll filter to our customer service and you can see there's a lot of different customer service workflows. I'm going to click on the customer service engine. So I'm going to put myself in the shoes of a customer service team at a department store, although this can apply across a lot of different industries. So I might need to send proactive communication, reviewing customer responses and cases, emails about the status of an order, complaints, feedback. It's all very time consuming to manual, right? Think about all the different pieces of information to reply to a simple email about a delayed order. Data on the customer, their order, the product, supply chain, etc. right? There's a lot to it. So you're able to see here today how the ontology is key. It's bringing together the data, logic, and actions across your enterprise. And that's the basis for the AI's responses. It's also the mechanism for capturing tribal knowledge as my employees interact with the AI. We're able to use AIP to take action, increasing our efficiency and helping teams stay on top of what needs to be done. All right, let's get into it. This is our AIP customer communication engine. So me as a customer service agent, I use this to help our customers get answers to their different questions or queries. So you can see here, I've got different cases. The few, first few I show are here just to complete it to show you, okay, we've got an inquiry about it. I need to email the customer back with an update about their order. Similarly, you can go through each one of these and we have all the information about what's going on. I can even explore the case ontology to understand how everything's related, what is actually happening for this customer. So now I can see there was a customer alert for Emily Williams. Here's the customer, the order is placed out for delivery and it's been shipped. Um, and then we even have the AI suggested responses um, that we have as part of this process. Pretty cool to see how it all fits together. All right, so let's go to our first open one here with Paul Thomas. So Paul Thomas... Um, is asking if he can postpone his uh, delivery by a week. He won't be available. It's a TV, probably doesn't want it sitting outside. Again, I can see Paul Thomas is a loyal customer, medium value. And then we can see kind of the order of events related to this case. Pretty neat. And now uh, AIP is suggesting multiple actions I can take in the order that I should take them. So first I need to modify the delivery date um, back by a week. And here I can go do that. That's the date I want. Now, if I wanted to override it and say, actually, when I have it on the 4th, I could do that. So again, it gives me the first suggestion. It's as easy as clicking this button and we apply that. Now that writes back to the ontology, making that the new ground truth. And you can see everything recalculates here. That could also then be written back to whatever source system that you need it to. All right, so we've updated that. Now the next uh, item of action is emailing Paul Thomas about the update. Very cool. So again, this is pretty neat how I can see um, the next action. I generate the email response based on the changes we just made, and then I can hit approve and send. All right, that's pretty neat that I can have AIP actually generate the email based on the new context and respond back to the customer for me. Pretty slick. How do I trust it though, right? So we believe in trust through transparency. The transparency is the chain of thought reasoning of what the LM's doing, what tools it's accessing, what data it's getting from those tools. And so this is ultimate transparency of what the LM is doing across this to generate the email for me. So how do we do that? If we come over here real quick, this is our AIP logic tool, so our LM back functions. And this is how we actually build and debug um, did these functions. So in here, I've got an inquiry and I'm going to figure out in this logic box how I need to respond to a customer. So in here, I lay out the instructions of what I'm wanting the LM to do. So I lay out the instructions, I give it access to tools. In this case, it's just data tools, the ontology. So it grounds its knowledge in the ontology of your business. And you can see very explicit access to only what I want to give it to, not just the object, but the actual properties of those objects as well. And then I give it the task of what I want it to go do at the end. And I have it output the, the response for me. Here I can also configure what model I want it to use. So it's as easy as a drop down to pick different models or test them out. Very slick. And then we ultimately bring that response back in here and we actually generate an ontology object based on that. So we're going to use this to actually edit and create a new email suggestion for 
um, Paul Thomas right in here. And then as far as debugging goes in AIP logic here, you can actually debug and see the chain of thought reasoning, all the detail about the tools, what it was doing, how it stepped through. So as you're building these, you have that interactive experience to see how the LLM's chain of thought is reasoning across your prompts, across your data, and make sure that you have a robust use case that you want to productionalize. Very neat. Okay, I hope you see kind of the flow about how these things will go across cases and how AI can really help accelerate. That's great. But I also want to capture the tribal knowledge uh, that I might have or my coworkers might have so that AI gives even better suggestions over time. So how do we do that? Let's jump down to Olivia Harris's case here. So the order is taking longer than expected. Can you tell me if there's an issue with the shipment and when they ex when she should expect it to arrive? Um, so it looks like it has shipped. And so we're able to use the grounding truth of the ontology to generate that update for her. And then we also apologize for inconvenience that might have um, caused her and for her patients. That's great. But I've been here long enough to know that, hey, this is an oak space L-shaped desk. So this is a big piece of furniture. She's probably going to need to be there and have some help to make sure it gets into her property. Since we're delayed a little bit, let's offer that up and make sure that she understands we're willing to help her actually move it into the property. So we're going to edit this email and we're going to add in, uh, make sure she's there and our delivery staff can help move it in for her. Again, great customer service. How do I teach AI to do this on its own? Well, I've got this little button down here to provide domain feedback. So I'm going to capture the feedback about how I would change this. And let's see. So this isn't related to that she's a college grad or the location. It's because it's a, a furniture, a piece of furniture, right? So I'm going to hit submit. And that's actually going to capture that feedback so that the next generation for emails, I'm going to understand that when I have furniture, I want to be able to offer this up when we're delayed. That's great. So let's shrink this back down here. And now that I can actually hit um, submit changes and that's gonna submit the change to this email and register that feedback. And then I can hit approve and send the email. Now Olivia is gonna get that update. We're gonna mark this one as completed. Very cool. Now let's go see this. You can see explore feedback. So we can see the feedback. Um, so we already had one here about loyal customers. This is the feedback I provided. So I can actually see the feedback across this these are the different principles about how I want to operate my customer service business. So you can add, change, edit these things. And this is the, the real brain behind we capture that tribal knowledge. And AI and AIP use this to generate the next responses as domain knowledge of your business. This is how human and the feedback loops make your AI generated responses even better. Today, we walk through our AIP customer service engine and how it can help handle common customer service tasks more efficiently while still giving you full transparency, audibility, flexibility. With AIP, you're keeping humans in the loop, using the ontology to ground the LM's responses and the truth of your business. You're able to give the AI full context, capture institutional knowledge so that it can improve over time. If you'd like to learn more about this workflow, check it out now on our AIP Now website, which we've linked to in the post. Hit the request button if you'd like to learn more about that or other use cases, and the team will get back to you. With AIP, there's no better time to build than now.